Hey, it's Mike with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's uh, Wednesday, it's June 21st, this will be our chart lesson for the day. It was pretty obvious right out of the gate this morning that this was probably going to be a range day. Right after the 8.30 open, we had this correction and we just started going sideways, and whenever you get into the regular trading session and everything's still trading within the overnight low and the overnight high, then that's a good indication that we're probably going to have a range day. Doesn't mean that something can't change as the day goes on, but many times you're going to end up with a trading range in that day. So um, it was pretty obvious right after the open that we'd probably have that today. And uh, that's exactly how it turns out. So over time, as you get experience, you'll start to learn what the day will look like early on. Uh, or what the day is likely to look like early on, I guess I should say. Because, like I said, nothing's written in stone. Things do change. But, um, anyway, let's talk about the trades. There's not a whole lot of them today. What you have to remember, I got a couple of e emails today from some newer people that are trading, and what you got to understand on trading range days, this is a tight trading range, so it's easy to show you right quick, is the only way to enter on this is to sell these highs or buy these lows. That's the only way. And you have to have room to get out from one side back to the other. So in other words, if you enter here, you need room to get out before here. So you can't be entering up here in the middle close to the high. And if you're trying to go short, you got to have room to get out before you get down to the lows. And so just keep that in mind. It's the same thing here. Uh, you don't have that problem as much on when it's, bit, when it's a much larger, like the larger channel here. If you enter down here, you should have plenty of room. What you want to be concerned about down here is that you got room to get out before you get back to the EMA or a trend line or something like that. Um, so, but generally, if you get a good setup down here, you might just buy it. And especially these breakouts like so, because you may catch a major low for the day. So if you get a really good setup at the high or the low, you want to try to take those. Because if you'd have gotten short up here off this failed breakout, then you caught the major high of the day. You caught the high of the day. Same thing. If you were to get in down here somewhere in this reversal pattern, uh, you caught the low of the day. Didn't didn't have time to really do a whole lot, so you didn't go all the way back to the top again, but you still caught the low of the day. And sometimes they keep moving like this one did when you caught the high of the day. And, I mean, if you caught this one move, that's probably all you needed today. So keep that in mind. Uh, that's the key to trading range days. Um, I've had a couple of people ask me about breakout pullbacks, and th that's probably the least reliable pattern that we look for. Generally, you're going to fade breakouts. Um, that's just as simple as that, no, there, unless there's some overriding factor. Like, this is a good example here. Uh, you might have decided to go short here. What scared me away from this one and why I don't like it is because the next bar, this one doesn't close on its low, uh, but when it closes like that, I'm thinking, hey, I'm, I'm probably going to go short here if this breaks lower. But on the very next bar, it can't break lower either, and that one doesn't close on its low. So that leads me to believe that this may be this retest that pushed through here may try to get another leg up and create that new high and sure enough that's what's hap what happened so that's why you had to be a little bit concerned about that one uh, there's another trap right here notice the new high first entry long pull back second entry long and it fails uh, but when it turns down you don't have a whole lot of room left here so I mean if you had plenty of room to get out it does still work but you don't have much room there so um, you want to make sure you got room to get out before you get to this double bottom. And on my count, you're probably going to get stuck, but it, it, it pushes on through and it works. But you don't know that because look what happened right here. If you were counting on that same thing happening here, it didn't push through. So if you didn't have room to get out before that high, you would have gotten, you would have been in trouble. It never came back lower and broke lower, so you wouldn't have got stopped out. But who wants to ride that out? And coming down here a couple of times and 
you know, getting very close to your stop. Uh, because we, because if this is a range day, we may not make a new retest. We may just go lower. So these are the kind of areas you have to be kind of wise and patient and kind of sit and wait on the right setup and to make sure everything kind of falls in place. Because if it doesn't and you enter and take a little bit of a gamble, just like here, it was tempting to go long, but there's not room to get out between here and the uh, those last closes overnight high. And so that make that scares me away from going long there. Even though it worked and I had to watch it go without me, I did the right thing by not taking that trade and sitting on the sidelines. Because the next 10 times you take it, it'll probably fail. And that's what happens. You'll see these trades and you'll see these big moves. And you'll say, well, next time it does that, I'm jumping in. And the next 10 times you jump in, it doesn't work. And it fails on you. So that's the reason the rules are there. Follow the rules and you'll be a lot better off. But let's talk about the trades. Uh, didn't mean to get on the soapbox this early in the uh, the, the trading lesson, but let's uh, let's look at the trades here, and we'll wrap it up for the day. Uh, early on, we trade we trended down and we bounced uh, just as I was coming in this morning. You get a reversal pattern. Notice we made it. Notice all this resist or I'm sorry support down here, and we bounced a few times. If I'd have been here, I'm, I would have liked this trade right here just to try to ride it back to the EMA. But that was a little bit early, so it pushes up, it comes back, and right at seven o'clock, you get this setup here in the break higher with this bar. Uh, it's a fairly big bar, um, but if you didn't, if you tried to sneak in here with much better than right at the top, you probably got left behind because it took off pretty quickly. Um, your stop also, this is your low point here, so your stop still has to go below here. So this was a pretty big bar, and you may not have been able to get in it following the rules. Uh, as you get more experience, you you know, I, I, I'm hesitant to say this, but I but I have to because it's part of what we do. Uh, but I know what's going to happen. Some of you are going to start breaking the rule, and next thing you know, you're losing a bunch of money. But the ATIG rule is generally... For your stop, I guess I should clarify when I say the ATIC rule for your safety stop. Generally, it's for newer people or people that are struggling to be profitable or just barely profitable. Uh, and that's because you can't afford to lose a whole lot if you're losing more than you're winning. So once you start to read the price action pretty good um, and you get more advanced at it, I, I'll just be honest, I don't care about the ATIC rule anymore very much. I'm either going to be right or wrong, and I'm going to enter the trade. My stop entry is going to go right here, my buy stop, and my safety stop, once I, is going to, you know, it'll probably come on at eight ticks, but I might have to move it down a tick or two to get where it needs to be, which is below the lowest part of the swing. And I'm not going to worry about the eight ticks. You know, if the trade doesn't do what I think it's going to do, I might close it early, but generally I don't even do that. So, um... But until you get pretty good at this and you're winning, you know, when your win rate 70 or 80 percent, then you might consider foregoing that rule. But for now, don't. Uh, that's the best way I can say it. But anyway, I like this trade and it takes off quickly. And you're look, just looking to test this high here. And guess what? It goes up, tests that high. It actually gets a couple of ticks higher, but that's where you stall and it turns down. Uh, there's a little bit of a trap here when it pushed higher again. And then close and turns down. It's very low. That's very bearish for it to do that. Look how far away we are from the EMA. And uh, this is after the open. So it, it's looking like a range day. So we're probably coming back to this EMA. And we're probably going to try to come back to the other side. Which we end up doing. But we do get that retest in place first. Um, but you don't know that. So, um, But I like this one. But the only reason it's not blue is because... We haven't had a break with this trend line coming up yet. This is the first close outside, so we may try to get that retest. And you got to be careful about that. So uh, notice we pull back first entry, pull back second entry. Uh, it's tempting to go long there, but when this pushed on through the EMA like that and it's just kind of hanging right there, uh, I'm probably going to wait on a higher low. And we don't, we don't end up getting it. We ended up pushing lower again. Uh, I don't want to go short here. It actually went higher and turns and goes out the other side. And I like to get short on those because that's a, somewhat of a trap. Um, 
but it's so close to this low and it's right into the EMA that I just, you know, you just better off just to sit tight. And then the same thing here, you get that little push lower. It looks like you've got people trapped and, um, but your highs are right here. You don't have any room. If you, if you got a little better entry here and you had room to get in, I'm okay with going. Cause look what happens. It goes right to that point and double test it and can't get through. And then you get a little trap cause there's a high pull back first entry, pull back second entry. So you can't go long right into that, all that resistance. So when it turns back down and gives you that bearish bar, you can consider going short. But again, the reason I made it green is you don't have much room to get out. It, like I said earlier, it works, but you don't know that ahead of time. There's too big a chance that it touches that line or comes down to these last closes or something and bounces. So you just have to watch it. And then you finally get a chance to enter right here because now you know you got a trading range and you get that little push lower and you get a little tiny bar. So you got plenty of room to get out for the other side. Uh, it's not a perfect signal bar, but there's only three ticks in it, so it's very low, um, very low risk. I like that one. It's good for a scalp, nothing more. And then we, and then the little trading range just gets tighter, and you just don't have room to do anything here until you get another little bitty bar. Uh, you basically make a double bottom here, and you get this little bitty bar. So uh, again, you. You probably have to think about this, but this is really the top of the range. Even though the closers are here, we've been able to push back up there. So we'll probably push at least to there. So if you've got room to get out, you can go along there. And then, of course, since you pushed on through, you have to assume that, hey, we better draw a trend line here in case you got another trend going up. And that, keep, that trend line is what keeps you concerned about uh, going short here on this break it, really even I would have probably still liked this short if you hadn't had this bar this is telling right here this is this is the key to this whole thing that and of course the trend line but this is the real key Let me make that a little bigger just so y'all can see it um, it couldn't close it couldn't get through there and close this one didn't close on its low this one didn't close on its low and now you got a two bar matching low so what was resisting resistance is holding as support even if it's only temporary so now you got to be careful because it might swing back and forth across it a few times and we could be going to make a retest so uh, but I don't like going long here either even though you got to break out pull back long because this is not a very this is definitely not a good signal bar this is not a very good signal bar it leaves a lot of stem and it still closes back below here. So even though it breaks out up and goes higher, you just got to watch it. Um, you might have considered going short here because you've had a close outside here. And you really don't get the third confirmation of this one like you need. So, uh, but even assuming this is valid, you get the close outside and move to a new high. And you get a fairly big bearish bar. So, but this is really your signal bar. But you could have considered going short up here. You're a good bit away from the EMA, but you, you're right back into the support resistance line, and it may bounce. And notice that it did bounce. It was only temporary, though. And that's why you got to be careful getting short into that or long into that, that kind of uh, support resistance. But look what happens. It pushes up, gives you a lower high, turns, and comes back down. Um, and this is a failed breakout. So when you get that higher low and a big bearish bar with a big stem, I like going short there. You don't know that it's going to do this, but you figure it's coming back inside the range, probably back to, to at least test this high. And then this would be your next target, but it doesn't even check up. It just pushes on and it's gone. So there, you know, that prices are probably headed back to this low and they almost went straight there in one move. And those are the kind of trades that you like to catch. And this is the this, this is the one time on range days, um, especially uh, on tight ranges, where I'm probably going to try to hold on to a runner. Because if you catch a major high, it may run and you may. And notice what we end up doing. We end up getting, there's leg one. So when it started lower here, even though it's a range day, you want to measure that leg just in case. 
and you see we couldn't get it, but we, we got close, but we couldn't get it because it's a range day, and we had a little failed breakout about the same distance as this one, and we reversed back into the range, but you want to measure that just in case. You're always looking for those measured moves, but or even though it wasn't a perfect measured move, it's still a two-legged correction. There's one leg down, a correction, and then another leg down. And so there's your double move. It's not a perfect measured double move, but it's still a double move. So, uh, but again, it's tempting to go long. And, and somebody, a newer, a newer trader, uh, sent me this and wanted to know they went long right here. And I think they went long above. I can't remember if it was this bar or this bar, but this is really where you'd go long here because look how far away you are from the EMA. Uh, you did test this last closes, but I'm not going to mark that trade because we weren't down to the lows yet. So there's too good a, you know, there's no break of this trend line. There's just too big a chance that we come back up and touch this and turn back down again. Yeah, we're a long way away from the EMA. Uh, there's some reasons to like that one. You could probably argue for it to be green, but it's, that makes it very aggressive still. And it is bouncing off the trend channel, but look, it bounced off of it here. Of course, it never broke above it. But look what happened here. It broke above it, and it looked like it was going to turn back down. And there's too big a chance that's what happens right here, and it comes on down and finishes the move. But instead, it bounces. But you can't be going long here until you get a setup. There's a there's a higher low here, but then you don't have enough room back to the EMA. So it really kind of discounts that one, and you never get the reversal pattern until way up here and now you've got a break and you've got that track notice what this is right here and so if you notice this I wouldn't have a problem with you entering here um, but this is a repeat pattern of this little channel right here there's your correction and you get that one little tick higher just like right here and then you get a fairly bearish bar so if you notice that I'd be okay with you going short there uh, because this was, a, but this was a big move down. We didn't quite hit the lows, um, and so we may get another leg down, or we may just get another move down at least to here to test that, and then probably to test this. So um, that one probably still should be green, but it wouldn't even be green if you didn't see the things I just talked about. But this is a repeat pattern. But notice what happens, you, you got a new high first entry, pull back second entry, it fails, you get a double test of this area right here, one, two, big bearish bar. Now you got the chance to go short, and again, it takes off. Uh, so you get another big nice, this is a really big bar, so you may let it break lower and drop a limit order. You could have gotten field a couple of ticks back on that one and, and got within your eight tick rule and everything. So uh, that's a pretty good move down. And then... I'm going to show you a little trick here. This bounces. Uh, this looks like a spike in a channel, which I, I believe it is. But once we started going higher here, once we got the break, you still would figure we're go probably going to try to retest these original lows. So we may get a retest of this low after the break. So uh, a little trick here is just to copy your, your trend channel line. Drag it over an equal distance, which is right in there. And look what happens. That's exactly where that turns down. Exactly. So that's just in, that's just market geometry, that equal distance. And it went higher and turns, it comes down. So I like going short there. Um, we're, probably, we're going to retest this low, and we may retest this one, and we may keep working for that measured leg that I showed you that's this distance but no we end up bouncing which is what you really expect is probably going to happen because this is a range day so you you expect it to fail out this this side about an equal distance to what it failed out this side and there it is and you actually get a little reversal here but this is more sideways than reversal notice the low first entry second entry it fails and turns up I wouldn't take that one. I'm going to wait for it to get back inside and pull back and test here. And notice how it pushes right through the EMA, pulls back. It tests this once. Then it goes a little lower and reverses and goes right out the other side. Um, I like going long here on that higher low. And that's really, 
just a, like a recheck of the what this is just my theory but what I think happens is you got a people looking for a reversal but you didn't get all the pieces of it even though there's a failed second entry short right here uh, it doesn't really give you a real reversal pattern so but when it pushes through and pulls back and bounces right off that original support now it looks more like a reversal pattern and you can see how it rockets off here and all these shorts have to exit and that took you into the two o'clock hour we were just, we just didn't really get anything else after that so there's some good stuff here today but yeah this is just a typical you know trading range kind of day and it was pretty obvious that that's probably what we'd get not you know within 30 minutes of the market being open today so you know by nine o'clock it was pretty obvious so you could have gotten tripped up right in here um, if you did you really got chances to get out um, but by the time it touches here again you got a double bottom there and a double top up here then you know you got to look at that as a range even if it's going to continue on from there and doesn't keep going sideways like this it just really kind of tightens up here and gets tighter and drops a little bit lower so but that's the key to that but anyway i'm going to wrap it up um we'll be back again to do it tomorrow this is back with priceactiontradingsystem.com and we'll see you next time